Greetings, ghouls, gangsters, and gamers. It's your boy, the Good Sir Knight, and it is now officially 2023. A little bit late into 2023, so um, if you botched your New Year's resolutions, well, there's, you know, always Chinese New Year's, which recently got, went off, so, you know, Chinese New Year's resolutions. So, um, it is, unfortunately, a cloudy day today, and I've been busy all this first part of the year, but finally we're looking forward to getting back into it all, and um, for starters, we don't have the we don't I don't have a Lacroix on me at this moment, so instead we are going to pop open a Capri Sun because you know they say Capri Sun's out, guns out. So important start to the year, very important. So I generally wanted to do a uh, sort of end of the year video, and I wanted to pick up into a hey, it's the beginning of the year. Here's all like the cool stuff I want to get done. But uh, yeah, you know things happen. I was on vacation, and wife and kids, and friggin'. Work got really busy, then there was a whole flu pandemic that went around, and it like slowed everything down significantly, but we're ready to get back into it. In those few days, where everything was chaotic and hectic, I was able to pick up some uh, interesting gear and stuff, I've been wanting to do all sorts of different reviews that I've been pretty much putting off, but we're going to get to those early into this year, as well as some um, really cool, interesting things I think are going to be fun to uh, do a review on the channel. So, let's get started. So, we had a few upgrades, particularly... Well, yeah, basically we're going to go over a little um, sort of gear list of what we mostly, what I mostly managed to like get together and stuff and things I'm trying to like push forward and as far as uh, training and stuff. Make sure it all holds up as well because it's all very comfortable within the premise of this room. But you know, actually getting out there, even just going to a little paper range with even just airsoft guns and getting some time in underneath all of it plays a key role. A good chunk of it I have, but other parts still need to be a bit more rigorously tested, so... First off, start with the old belt line. We still got our old little Safari Line holster. This one with uh, my, was it, RDR gear, or camo wrap. We do have this all on a True North little um, mounting system setup with the uh, leg strap and things going on. So I want to do a review on that actual thing because apparently there's like not too many, uh, I haven't seen any, well, I haven't seen reviews. I'm sure there's reviews out there on it, but it's a cool little setup. I like it. I have talked to a few people that prefer the, uh, a little bit more flexible plastic safari line setups and uh, some people just haven't been able to get it to work out as well as they would have liked but it's a cool little setup outside of that we've got our IFAC still hanging back here I have taken a bit of the contents out to make it more compact making sure we're only sticking to the most important lifesaving materials then after that just a simple dump pack or dump pouch a little basic one I can't remember who makes this one got our fast mag two handgun mags and we got our freaking mount for our personal retention lanyard, but since we're not going in and out of vehicles at the moment, it's put away. Because if you don't need it, it's just extra weight slowing you down. So belt line is still pretty simple, it's been fairly, it's still streamlined, I'm not using the MDOM dump pouch. Unfortunately, I really like it, it just takes up a lot of space, a lot of extra weight, weight and everything, and this setup is very simple and streamlined, and I like it a lot, and that uh, really does help with the draw on the freaking, uh, the little belt, yeah, the leg strap. It helps out a lot. It's actually pretty comfortable in here, so we'll be doing a video on that here in the near future. Outside of that, let's skip right over the plate carrier and get and go straight to the top. Helmet. Helmets come together quite a ways over the years. We've got our nice little M81 mesh cover. We've got our Surefire Vampire Light. I know, um, I have seen all the posts. I know there's Mod Light and there's Cloud Defense Systems, but the Key thing is that I, if I was buying a new light from the get-go, then yeah, having all that advice, be like, okay, yeah, let's get one of those. But since we already have it and we're running it, it's uh, it's gonna have to do for now, because we don't want to be. Because let's be honest, the gotta have the new gear hype beast hype beast sort of mentality is uh, kind of cringe. So we're gonna go with what we got and what works, and potentially down the line in the future, if I get a chance, I would love to try out the. Uh, Mod, mod light cloud defense lights but at the moment I already got a light and it's uh, financially prohibitive and it'd be dumb to just uh, throw everything on the credit card that would be a very uh, very poor plan although you got the therm I got the therm to work I got this uh, little therm mount a minute ago and it was stupid wobbly just all the time just ga just a little bit of wobble actually no I got I got all the wobble out yeah, yeah yeah so what I did pro tip here for you guys if you got wobbly mounts and stuff like that, throw a bunch of electrical tape. I think I got like three strips under there of electrical tape and that I basically 
pushed it out far enough to where it sits comfortably and now I can actually move it without it wobbling around and going clonk clonk on the helmet the whole time so one of the other big things I've managed to pick up but I haven't done a review or anything on it yet is we do have a Mohawk camera now and yes it is in the uh, super cool multi-cam black they had a they were sold out of the normal black ones and they're like well we have the exact same thing but with the uh, Gear skin tape on it, pre-established in multicam black, and it's the exact same price. And I was like, yeah, I'll take one of those. So we're going to be doing a review on this. Not too far in the future, we still got our good old Hellstar. And we still got our Opscore amps. I did take off the uh, counterweight because with a ballistic helmet, the night vision works really well as is. The helmet weight does a really good job with the uh, weight disbursement and everything. And um, so I did, I'm going to keep the uh, counterweight in the event that I do manage to procure a carbon fiber helmet. Over on this side, we got our well, life bar, important, keep an eye on that. If it gets uh, gets red, you need to go do something about that. We got our Princeton Tech. Since I took off the um, counterweight, I didn't have anything to directly mount my freaking Hellstar mount to, so I got a little carabiner ring. I'm using the <laughs> Princeton Tech as an anchor point at this point. So uh, yeah, that's, um, that's how we're gonna make sure if our Hellstar does decide to run away it's going to get caught up on that and we won't lose it. And also the Hellstar is acting as a marker to make sure I have the camera lined up properly. So all I got to do is throw this on my head and I can rotate the camera on and we got a straight shot into what we're looking for. And of course we still got the step and visor with our laser resistant lens. That's a, uh, look at that. <laughs> the uh, little gaskets are coming off. We're not doing any force on force immediately at the moment so it's probably better without the gaskets if we're just gonna be doing normal stuff so yeah um yeah I'm still in the back still the same interior with their new uh, comfy head up headband the um, improved 4G pad specifically for the uh, new I can't remember the name of the freaking vented mesh lux liner thing they got going on in our micro dial I did actually look up a bit of things because a lot of people have been uh, swearing by the worm dial, and I saw mixed results. So on one end, a lot of people really like the worm dial because it's a super low profile compared to the OCC dial. However, these uh, plastic gear pieces and stuff that you use to, um, you know, kind of wrench the thing down on your head on the uh, new worm dial setup, they like come way up here and they like strip into the helmet and stuff. So a lot of the uh, people with hair. And uh, without hair, like I was doing earlier, I said it's been like freaking cleaving all the hair off the top of their head has been really awkward and kind of giving them bald spots. How true is it? I can't say for sure because I don't own one. I can only really tell you about things I have first-hand experience in. Otherwise, I would be a bad YouTuber. And that, how do you know I'm a uh, good YouTuber? Because if I was a bad YouTuber, I wouldn't be here discussing it with you. Team Fortress 2. Anyway, so helmet's up. A lot more streamlined and uh, still super lightweight. We can still drop these down, shabam, and be comfy. Throw on our amps. And of course, the amps are set up so we can just jam in either our soda mask. Now we can still run that pretty easy with just the uh, freaking mic port into here and drop the mic down into the plate carrier or the uh, chest rig, depending on what we feel like doing. And of course, with the amps down but not on, it's always freaking wonky because it's echoing the voice and doing all that weird stuff. Additionally, the amps are doing the thing they were doing previously. So if you want another pro tip on amps, they started even when I turned them off, they'd still have that little bit of static going on and it's still significantly slower than previously, but still drain the battery. So if you own a pair of amps and you've got the NFMI enabled, good stuff going on, how do you fix that? Well, easy, easy enough. You just have the amps on, well, turned off, but still kind of on so you can hear that little faint static, and then just rotate one of the battery caps, just a little bit, we'll open it up a bit, and you'll hear very, it's very, pretty audible when it cuts out because everything gets quiet, quiet, instead of just, you know, kind of staticky quiet. And uh, yeah, with that, it'll disconnect the battery connection and you won't have to worry about draining the battery if it's not connected. Then you need it back on, you just get an old twist back the other way. It'll do its freaking power down noise, despite, you know, going into the first battery. So it goes doo doo doo. And that's how you know the battery's connected, you're ready to go, and you're not wasting your battery fr uh, fruitlessly. So, 
Yeah, that's all the helmet stuff I got. Oh, let's put that back down. Oh, yeah, and of course, we still have our Force on Force mandible for all the cool Force on Force things. And we got our freaking carbon fiber ATV sort of mandible for our Sub-Zero impressions. Or, you know, it's kind of like keeping your grill a little bit safer. Outside of that, we've still got the... We're going to go over a few more things here in a second. we got the plate carrier. Plate carrier is still pretty solid. I did cut down on a few things. Let me actually throw this on real quick. I can uh, show you what I mean. So we did. I did decide... I was looking around... Oh boy, i got to review these AXL shoulder pads. So they got these cool structural shoulder pads that are absolutely massive. You may notice them. They're the uh, M81 setup thing I got going on on the shoulders here. So what the ABS comes with and what really only works with the harness itself is these kind of like flimsy shoulder socks. And they're okay but they always wrap around and do weird stuff and event occasionally the freaking cable management system is going to be rubbing into your neck and you're like okay. I, you, so you can either run them slick or you can try doing an upgrade. So I decided to test out the uh, structural shoulder pads because I saw on the AXL Instagram page that they had them running on an AVS harness. And I was like, if it works, I'm in. So of course I had to drop a chunk of cash and try it out. So they do work. They beef the bolster up the plate carry a bit. I'll probably do a video on them later, even though I'm explaining. They're simple enough to explain right now. They lift up the plate carrier a bit, so you gotta loosen your straps here. Adjust those. Pretty easy with the union using two Cobra buckles because you adjust them exactly the same. And uh, also having, because of how stiff they are, to get them to keep fitting in the Pelican case, having two Cobra buckles to take off the front plate entirely makes it a lot more manageable. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. We've also significantly reduced our Cumberbund carry items. I know the harness is for like carrying a ton of stuff. But now we've got just our little radio pouch. And we do, I do have a radio on the way. I'm pretty excited. One of the big things I want to be working on this year is, well, partially, A, learning a third language. Or at least improving my knowledge of several other languages that I'm very uh, neophyte level in. Such as, you know, um, could be... I guess I'm being better at Spanish, but also there's freaking German, there's... I could learn a bit of French. French is fun. Um, some Cantonese, uh, Mandarin, all that. Fun stuff and sign language. One of my buddies did a lot of sign language. Uh, I used to work at the hotel with. One of our big things we'd always do would be um, nice try, kid. And we just do that back and forth to each other when you're having fun or someone drops something. It was a good time. We got our GP pouch over here. This is mostly just serving to hold this cable in place. But I can also, I've got my personal retention liner. It's actually chilling in there. This gives us a little, just enough options to move things around. On the back, the back is more or less slick outside of a patch I throw on there. But we do have a lot of options with the plate carrier, stuff I particularly like. So, first off, we do have the really basic semi geardo friggin' uh, groin protective patch. This is great if you are doing force on force training to uh, keep your junk safe. And um, that's about it, really. It keeps your junk safe. And yeah, it just, it's, easy, it's an easy attachment, especially the harness helps deal with the weight a lot. Just mount that up underneath there, and bam, you are set and uh, slightly better protected. Do, do, do outside of that, all the other stuff, what the hell? Oh, it's just a big spider, don't worry about it guys. Uh, <laughs> outside of that, we do have, I do still prefer to run packs over um, assault panels. So of course, pack-wise, the only two I'm particularly using is of course the standard rink or Philby assault pack we got going on here. This guy is heavy because I have my LBT chest rig in there for when I don't want to wear a plate carrier and still carry a bunch of mags and also mostly run this bag. This is a fun, this one's particularly simple. I'm going to throw this on, I might as well. What I like particularly about it is that it fits relatively comfortable even with a plate carrier. And of course you can self access all of your own stuff, so oh boy, I gotta adjust those straps. Oh, let me see if I can get this on real quick. Ugh. Yeah, don't choke me. Not now. But yeah, so you can throw that on. You can sit in way too far on the side, huh? See if I can do this without killing myself. Aha! Yeah, so that's pretty high up. 
But yeah, it's pretty easy. Fits comfy, uh, nice and tight from the back. The chest strap sucks because it's like right up on your neck, but it's not gonna like do any problems. And then you have your ability to carry all your water and stuff to so, go you know, long distances. Probably don't want to be wearing a plate carrier while doing it. Probably throw that on top of the pack itself, but yeah, it's good to have a good to have a nice pack. This is a good easy way to carry a bunch of stuff over a decent distance. No oh boy, I bet it weighs a lot less when I don't have the chest rig in there. And then, um, before we get to the next pack, we do have the assault pan the, uh, the nice little assault panels going on here, so... This is the, the pouch one I haven't done any reviews on yet. I'm still uh, dicking around with it and finding cool things you can do. But the, uh, with the AVS, these little two bottom mag pouches actually work relatively well. And, uh, yeah, there's all the cool high-speed stuff you can throw in there for minimal encumbrance with uh, maximizing team capabilities. Of course, the reason I prefer the pack is I can access all of my own stuff. Whereas with the panels, if you don't have a team, then you're honestly better off not having to carry the panels. And of course, we got the pack. I did the pack review earlier when I had the um, structural plate carrier. And these guys were all over the place because the plate sat at like a weird angle that pushed them out. But the pack's also pretty cool if you need to carry like single large items or something or of that nature. And then the pack that I would prefer to take with me everywhere to do all of my pack-related things is the Tactical Assault Systems freaking uh, Combat Sustainment Pack. And I like this one because it's lightweight, it carries water, and um, if you don't have water, you're going to be having a bad time. Carry three extra mags, your multi-tool or whatever, and you got three pockets to throw in anything and everything you want. Generally, casualty rescue stuff, but you can throw in little bits of food, simple things. Um, yeah, just like three things, you can jam a poncho in there pretty easy, so. It's a super, it's a lightweight pack, that's what I like about it. I don't have the uh, hydration filled up or anything, but this guy, I did improve it with the uh, pig shoulder straps, that's a big one. We got this guy going, he's gonna sit all sorts of wonky, but yeah, we eventually get him set up there. Ah, oh no. Oh no! It's just trap works a lot. Oh my god, what is he doing? He is like really high up there. Come on. Be cool. Yeah, this is a bit of a... Bit of a... Process. Again, to sit right on the plate. But uh, yeah, not, uh, not too bad. There we go, that's a lot... A lot better. So yeah, it sits a bit high, but it carries everything you're going to need. It's comfortable enough. It's super lightweight. I got BB's <laughs> magazine pouches, so. But it could be Skittles, you never know. Probably don't want to carry either, because of how much noise they make, but. I love this pack. This is hands down my favorite, just because it, it's got everything I could potentially need in there. And I got my quick release buckles. Probably loosen that one up a bit. And yeah, just like that, bam. Re supply all of your mags and all your good stuff. Great pack, absolutely. 10 out of 10. And, um, yeah, that's about all of it as far as um, the handgun and everything. We do have our X300V Vampire Light. We got our freaking RMR. Yeah, that's really all the modifications I need for a handgun. And. And then, of course, with the rifle, we've got our EOTech. We've got our G45 magnifier, both on Unity. And we got a nice little laser box. we got our Surefire Vampire Light, so IR and white light. Um, the IR light plays a bigger role when we're playing around with Gen 1 nods, because Gen 1 nods suck with with uh, without any light. So throwing on some IR makes it significantly easier to, well, you know, see. And stuff, although they're not nearly as good as Gen 3, gotta make do with what we got, so better than no night vision. Very, very true. Especially even if you're not using IR light, there's a good chance that other guys, particularly with a digital night vision, whatever nonsense they're running, they're probably running way too many freaking uh, IR lights anyway, so they're gonna be beacons that you would not be able to see otherwise. So, yeah, and of course you can always set to white light mode. And if things go wonky, you can always put this in the laser mode. Pew. Yeah. Because lasers are cool. Anyway, that's part of the reason why we also have the uh, laser-resistant lenses, just in case we had a reflective surface. 
don't go blind. Don't want to spend all that money on LASIK. And then uh, be blind, so set you back to normal. Yeah, so. I do. I've also really grown to love. I know it's just like a replica Geisley, but this little freaking um, M lock handrail compared to the a fact that I use like nothing but quad rails for the longest time. It's a lot more comfortable in the hand. The hand fits a lot more nicely. It's not like bulked out to the sides or anything, so I don't feel the need to have an angled grip. So you got slick down here on the bottom. Easy peasy. Throw on the magnifier. Get a bit of a cheek hold going. And we could zoom in on stuff. So yeah. It's also significantly lighter than it used to be, so we could do whatever drills we need to sling. Sling it out of the way, even with the sling just hanging off. But yeah, so we have something to do drills with. And yeah, that's, um, of course, our slingster. Gotta have the slingster going on, so. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so that's pretty much what we've, I've worked everything down to, so. Much like bodybuilding running all of your gear and doing all these tests and stuff, it's a combination of bulking and cutting. You're generally doing one or the other. Either you're bulking to try to like add to your capabilities, then when you do testing, things are all over the place and getting in the way and causing you problems, and then you go to the cutting phase and you start slurping things down. How much is, it, is the capability worth the extra weight? And more importantly, is there a smarter way to do it? And yeah, you're basically going back and forth between that until you end up with something sort of like what I ended up with, so. Right now this is like perfect, any like mission specific stuff can be worked around. And uh, yeah. Oh yeah, you can also, I, need, I haven't tested yet, but I need to see how many Capri Suns and like LaCroix, I think you can fit like two LaCroix on the GP pouch, but. I'm assuming it's gonna be like close to like six Capri Suns is gonna be an option, so. Hmm. Pacific Cooler. Anyway, that's all I wanted to do. I wanted to get a quick uh, 2023 video out there for you guys. It's, um, the year of the rabbit. It's supposed to be good, but we will see. Uh, hopefully, yeah, so hopefully we'll see what I can do. Hopefully get out there, spend a, more, spend a little bit more time actually getting in a training with all the kit going on. And, uh, yeah, I'll be working on a ton of reviews because I haven't done the, the North Amer the, what is it, the True North little mounting system. I haven't done the, uh, pack zip-on panel 2.0 and I haven't done the uh, Mohawk. The Mohawk camera is a big one I'm really interested in because uh, it's supposed to have really really good stuff and with the Mohawk it does have a weird Wi-Fi network thing so if you have like phones within a certain distance you can like live feed, live stream directly to phones to have like a live helmet feed. I know they did come out with a Mohawk 2 and it's like a thousand dollars but instead of Wi-Fi it's going into some crazy radio network to broadcast longer distances so your command can be like oh it's just like the movies I can see his live helmet feed that's so cool <laughs> we're, we're not gonna be testing that one <laughs> but yeah so that's all I got for you guys um the radio gets in gotta be doing a lot more radio studies I noticed everyone's been getting really big into uh radios because everyone it's like amps or Comtac 3s and they go, wow, these are cool, I want to plug these into something and, you know, talk to my buddies. And uh, then you end up finding out there's a lot that goes into radios. As you start parsing your way through that, it's a rabbit hole and it grows more and more complex as you go, but you kind of start to understand it. And uh, that's mostly when I get knocked out this, uh, this year. On top of that... There's also the big thing, I noticed a lot of people are starting to catch on, my uh, IT buddies have been going on about it for years, but the, um, whatchamacallit, cybersecurity stuff, and not just like the generic cybersecurity stuff, like taking everything from your phone and PC and everything, and basically, actually, if you actually look at like how much freaking bloatware and stuff is on there, literally just sending out your data and key logs and everything off to a server that's generally not secure and going to get all your passwords and stuff stolen, it's like a huge thing and like people are only like starting to pay attention to it so I think that's gonna be one of the bigger things we might be seeing this year with any luck and of course you could be wondering well with how much the government goes on with a hatred towards the Second Amendment that maybe they would be like hey maybe we could pass a law or something since we do it all the time in negative ways against things we actually like so why don't we take something we don't like like our uh, private data just getting shotgun down to the world, sold for uh, who knows how much money for whatever nefarious purposes. 
targeted ads, I guess. At the minimum, targeted ads. And, uh, you know, well, we make, like, a law where it's illegal for companies and corporations to do that, and, uh, probably not gonna happen anytime soon. But at least people are seeing there's a concern in how much crazy stuff, because if the, uh, businesses and all the governments and stuff can see it, then with a little bit of work, your average Joe could see it. And if your average Joe is a, uh, malaligned actor, use it for, uh, actually some pretty, uh, pretty scary things, but that's for another video when I actually, if I can ever get my IT buddy to come on out here and be a uh, part of the channel, so we will see. But anyway, I wanted to get the video done, so congratulations on um, living to 2023. Big accomplishment, and like I tell people, with the, um, as far as the age of 50 goes, I'm not there yet, but, yeah, 50, 50 is pretty kind of old, but like, your options are you live to your 50th birthday, or you don't get to your 50th birthday. People don't want to get old, but the, the alternative kind of also sucks, so. <laughs> we will see. That's all I got for you guys. Um, cheers. Stay chivalrous. Um, stay in school. Don't do drugs. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. I got got to go work on those other videos or I'm never going to get them done. And uh, don't mind the hair. The, the wife is supposed to be like trim it up at some point. It never happens, so until she does, I'm going to grow like an obnoxious mustache. Cheers, everyone. See you later.